Hello everyone and welcome back to our first chapter for middle school already books and this book is written by one of your favorite authors Alan Gratz. He is the author of Refugee and he has a uh, several other books uh, similar to this in the historical fiction genre and it is about the Holocaust. So if those types of books intrigue you, this definitely will and I hope that you like it. So let's go ahead and get reading. This starts in Krakow, Poland in 1939 and 1942. Chapter 1. If I had known what the next six years of my life were going to be like, I would have eaten more. I wouldn't have complained about brushing my teeth or taking a bath or even going to bed at 8 o'clock every night. I would have played more, laughed more. I would have hugged my parents and I told them I loved them. But I was 10 years old and I had no idea of the nightmare that was to come. None of us did. It was the beginning of September and we all sat around the big table in the dining room of the family's flat on Krakusa Street eating and drinking and talking, my parents, my aunts and uncles, my cousins, and me, Jacob. Although everybody called me by my Polish name, Janek. The Jews must disappear from Europe. That's what Hitler said, Uncle Moish said, reaching for another pastry. I don't know how much more clear he could be. I shivered. I'd heard Hitler, the German for friar, give speeches on the radio. Führer meant leader in Germany. It was what the Germans called their president now. Hitler was always talking about the Jewish menace and how Germany and the rest of Europe should be Jew free. I was a Jew and I lived in Europe and I didn't want to disappear. I love my house and my city. The British and the French have already declared war on him, my father said. Soon the Americans will join them. They won't let Germany roll over all of Europe. He's already annexed Austria and Czechoslovakia, said Uncle Abraham. And now he invades Poland. My father sipped his coffee. Mark my words, this war won't last more than six months. My uncles argued with him, but he was my father, so I believed him. Enough politics, my mother said. She got up to clear the table and my aunts helped her. Yannick, why don't you put on a show for us? He built his own projector. I ran to my room to get it. It wasn't a film projector like the one at the movie theater. It was a slide projector I'd made by mounting a light bulb on a piece of wood and positioning wooden plates with lenses from magnifying glasses in front of it. I could show pictures on the wall or do shadow puppet shows. My cousins helped me hang a white sheet in the doorway of the sitting room. And when everyone was seated, I plugged in the projector and clicked on the radio. I like to have musical accompaniment, like a movie soundtrack. When the radio warmed up, I found a Count Basie song that was perfect and started my show. So it kind of reminds me of William from our book earlier in the year. Using cardboard cutouts of cowboys. Indian stagecoaches and horses had I glued to sticks. I projected a shadow show about a sheriff in the American Wild West who had to protect his town from bandits. John Wayne Westerns were my favorite films, and I took all the best parts from his movies and made them one big story. My family laughed and cheered, and I called out to the characters like they were real. They loved my shows, and I loved putting them on for them. I was never prouder than when I got my father to laugh. Maybe one day I would go to America and work in the movies. Aunt Gisela would often ruffle my wavy hair and say, You look like a movie star, Yannick, with your dark blonde ha hair and big eyes. I was just getting to the part where the bandit leader robbed the town bank and was squaring off for a shootout with a hero when the music on the radio stopped mid-song. At first, I thought the radio's vacuum tube had blown, but then a man's voice came on the radio. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this broadcast with the news that the German army has reached Krakow. No, my father said. So soon, Uncle Moish said. It's been only six days. 
Where is the Polish army? I came out from behind the sheet in the doorway to listen. While the radio announcer talked about Polish forces withdrawing in Lotz in Warsaw, there was a big boom. My mother's teacups rattled in their saucers. My cousins and I ran to the window to look outside. Dark smoke curled into the sky over the rooftops of Podogorze, our neighborhood. Someone cried out on the next street, and the church bells of Wawel Cathedral rang out an alarm. It was too late. The Germans were here. If I had only known then what I know now, I would have run. I wouldn't have stopped to pack a bag or say goodbye to my friends or even to unplug my projector. None of us would have. We would have run for the woods outside of town and never looked back. But we didn't. We just sat there in my family's flat, listening to the radio and watching the sky over Krakow turn black as the Germans came to kill us. So that is the first chapter of this book, Prisoner B3087. And I hope that you will be interested in reading this book or Refugee, which is a fantastic book. And I will check in with you next time. Happy reading.